50 가까이 차이 날수 있습니다. 제이 16강에 올라갑니다. 와, 진짜 시바. 진짜. Welcome back. It's time for the final best of three in tonight's GSL Code S. We are about to wrap up Group A. We have two players who have, uh, I guess, throughout all of GSL, we would not be saying these are, you know, of course, round of eight players. Hurricane and Ragnarok. These were like the extras of GSL. These were like in the old Star Trek show where they had to introduce one new character. You knew that guy was going to die at the end. That's what, what these guys were, because that's back when they didn't kill main characters. Well, now it's different. Either Hurricane or Ragnarok is going to get to the round of eight. We've seen a huge improvement, not just in the results as far as how far they get um, in GSLs. We've seen them playing better than ever before. So I'm excited for whoever moves on, but I'm also sad for the loser because We've been casting these games, uh, the games of these players, excuse me, for a long time. And frankly, I I'm a fan of both of them now, man. They're looking yeah, really good. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see uh, this rise, getting some new players up there. Cobalt, our first map. So very cool to see some of these new maps. Cobalt, my friends. Okay, let's go to game one <laughs> on our four player map. Hurricane versus Ragnarok. Say Cobb Alt. Cobb Alt. Well, that would be ear. Oh. Hurricane. Sci Storm Gaming. Ragnarok. Whoa. Big support for Ragnarok here. There were people cheering for Hurricane, though. Yeah. Don't feel bad. Don't yeah. be sad. All right. Well, we have like every symbol here. To, to There's actually... nuclear waste here. Don't do this. Yeah. Also, don't do this. Nuclear waste here. It doesn't seem like every symbol, but two symbols everywhere. I thought we might see some more. Yeah. We actually had the repair symbol earlier, but I missed it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, there, there it is. is. There it is. You can repair over here, but there's nuclear waste over there. Can you land anything there? I don't think so, right? Over here, there's an alarm going off. <coughs> don't expand here. Do not expand here. That's what that symbol means. Oh, uh -oh. you rebel. Mistakes. This is so funny. Four-player maps. <laughs> yep. I'm all for four-player maps, by the way. I think really as long as we keep it. mixing it up with maps, we're going to be in good shape. Yeah. We don't need any more maps that look like Ohana, that's for sure. Which means friendship or family. I'm sorry. <laughs> I messed the meme you up. You are on top of the oh, memes. Oh, man. Meme Lord. Yeah. Tasteless here. Now, as the game goes on here, what kind of tech are we going to have? Are we going to go into Robo, get a timing attack? Are we going to have something uh, older, like Stargate, oh, get a yeah. couple oracles out here? I think you got to go Stargate. Like, Yeah? No, I guess he's not. He's getting his warp gate right away, so unsure. Uh, I think that, like, the map is pretty big. The map is pretty long. 
it's I I just I don't feel like a, a, a timing attack is as likely to work. Yeah, something like this makes sense though. Just insta twilight. This could be the DT based Archon drop, or it could be like a, a Glaives or Charge all in. I think both those are all right. The Overlord's but, coming in now. Let's see if it scouts that. Yeah, something like. Um, did he see it? Did he see oh it? He did, gosh, he did not. It's Damn, you know. <laughs> you know it, yeah. <laughs> something like an Immortal Push, though. The problem I have with Immortal Push is like. You're making your mortals and you're walking them across this long, 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 long map. You know? Yeah. Oh, so maybe a DT based Archon drop then? Yeah. There we go. Now, this is. It's an older style. That doesn't mean it's bad or it's obsolete. It's just something that we've definitely seen a good amount of. I think it's actually and, pretty decent right now. No, I, yeah, I think it's perfectly fine. I think there's a reason why it's still being used here. And so you can have it where you try to spring the DTs on them um, and get some quick damage that way. But you also have the option to just go into Archons. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you know, if you've watched GSL's past, you've heard this before. But you know, the Archon drop is definitely something that is a really strong way to play the game. By the way, Zealot Legs coming here as well. Hmm. Um, if you were to do an Archon drop, Archons are almost entirely shields. Warp uh, Prison pickup distance is huge. Uh, and it's you know it's not the hardest thing to do to, to fly around with a warp prism, shave off Zerg units, and as long as you don't lose the Archons or the warp prism, you've lost nothing. Yeah, we've seen some real cost efficiency with that. But I think Zerg players have really adapted to this. They've gotten much better than we've seen in the past about uh, trying to hold off certain attacks, especially ones like this. But sure. um, you know, build order randomization. If we're going to go big picture, it's important that the you know, you're not doing the same thing every time, or people will simply counter you. Mm -hmm. You can experience this on the ladder when you encounter the same guy and he really only has one trick, and you, you keep oh, yeah. seeing him do the same thing, and after a couple games, you're never going to lose that guy again because yeah. he can't mix it up. Um, it's even more pronounced in best of threes and tournament plays, especially if you're a, a prominent enough pro gamer that your games are out there and studied. So I think it's a good idea to bring a build like this, at least to start things off. And here come the two DTs now. Look at that, going up after the Spore immediately after a couple drone kills. Yeah, and the oh, Spore actually so goes annoying. down. So he can get a, several more drones. Now the Overseer is going to come up. In fact, can he even get the Queen here? No, no probably not. not. That's too ambitious. But it's good damage. Look at this, yeah. between the two Adepts and these two DTs. It's a Spore kill, a few Lings, and 11 drones. Really, yeah, and, really and it went unpunished. So he's going to warp in a few more units here. We're going to turn this into an Archon. And this is where, okay, so the initial damage has been done. Now comes the follow-up push. Zerk's put in a position where they need to uh, rebuild e economically from their losses. If they were to keep making an army, Protoss should outpace them, especially if you have that many workers killed. So uh, this is where Protoss continues to harass, but there is going to be a push, which is an attempt to throw the Zerg off of the balancing act. Some immortals are being made here. Oh, look at that. The Zalt's actually... Uh, so you go down and engage some links. This is really cute. It's like he kind of has some zealots out there to fight in the front, but then he kind of has some warpins over yeah, here. Yeah. And it seems like really well. it's, it, it's really sp spreading the, um, the the Protoss too thin. Now, of course, oh, he does not manage to keep the uh, Archon alive. One is alive, but like barely. Go, 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 go. Um, and so the harass is, is going to end, but that was an unusual split with armies in that harass. Yeah, yeah. Now, Zerg survives it. The question now is, is Ragnarok back on his feet? Is, are there going to be other opportunities? Because I said it was going to be a follow-up push to do more damage. It's not. It's actually a third base. He's going to play much more conservatively. Well, there is definitely a follow-up push coming when yeah. you open up with the Just not DT on two bases. Archon drop. Yeah. A lot of times, I think what the, the strongest follow-up is, is to make a lot of Immortals, Archons, charge lots, and your third base, and then just move out again. Yeah and just like keep pressure on your opponent because this is a build where it's a little bit harder to get into Psy Storm cleanly. So keeping the pressure on your opponent is, right. is good. And a lot of that's because it was a DT tech to get the Archons out. Yeah. You yeah. already kind of have the Archon tech. tech and to spend even more gas to get the High yeah. Templar tech the, is The, the kinda... DT tech is kind of a quick shortcut to get Archons. Yeah, it is. Uh, where you're, you're, you're getting something early on, which is like kind of cheaper 
Archons, but you're also giving up late game tech, which is DTs. And so in, in this case, the follow-up push is the most sensible one. So it's going to be three bases. I thought it was going to be two for some reason. But well, it's he's mostly a, yeah, I mean, it's mostly a placeholder nexus. It's not fully saturated yeah, yeah. or anything. It's, it's like you're taking it not uh, not, not for like, like, oh, well, now I'm he'll exactly keep safe expand. You just. This is definitely not all in. Like, well, he might turn a, lot, a lot of games are won when you did so much damage, but they barely survived. But you did so much damage with your third base, you just kind of take a lead from there. Yeah, yeah. Some very good force fields going down. He actually clears quite a few roaches there. We saw him losing Archon, take a couple vials here, losing some of his sentries. A couple wow, vials actually, actually connecting. Landing right on the Immortals, but I think this is too much damage. We're starting to see too many Archons, too many Immortals, and not enough anything Zerg here. He can actually edge his way into the third base. Uh, can he actually snipe down the uh, War Prism? Here we go! Wow! Oh, wow! He had oh, to commit balls. so hard because it and was a beautiful warp warp right location. there. GG, Hurricane My takes God. game one. Crazy. It was a great, I didn't even realize for a second there, uh, he had to get so close because it was over the smoke, so he just could not see it. Oh, I didn't notice that. Good call. Yeah, so he actually super committed to kill it, didn't get it, and that's GG. Look at that uh, face on Ragnarok. That's a, oh. Yeah, it's a frustrating one mm -hmm. uh, to just die to the follow-up push. Um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 Hurricane played it very, very well. It seems like uh, if you just do straight immortal pushes, Ragnarok has your number a bit, but some of these harassment into it, that does a little bit more to uh, conceal exactly when you're moving out exactly the strength of your army. It's having a bit of a harder time there. We're gonna go to new repugnancy for game number two. Now Hurricane opened up with a little bit of an older style. Obviously it's still viable. Uh, DT dropped, killed about 11 drones. I think it was exactly 11 actually. And then uh, went into Archon Harass. It wasn't the best Archon Harass, but it also didn't matter that much because already that initial attack had done so much. Then he wins with a push. Let's see what he does in game number two. Ragnarok showing very solid late game style. If he can get to that late game, he might be a real threat to Hurricane. Sci Storm Gaming, Ragnarok. So the probes blocked the second hatchery. So the second hatch goes to where the third hatch normally is. Um, common way to just sort of take some control early on. It's very annoying game. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's going to be some kind of a attack to pair with this. I know that adepts uh, early on were exploited for situations like this where your creep's not quite defended. But I feel like Zergs, especially in 2019, uh, are, are pretty are much better at handling adepts. Mm -hmm. The Adept was sort of this unit that was great for comedy in RTS when it first came out because there was no unit that moved like that in RTS. <laughs> yeah, it it's was like very novel. On both sides, players are struggling with it. You'd see some players shade their Adepts into corners and they get stuck and killed. And then other times Zerg couldn't split correctly. So mm -hmm. there was this whole learning process for all the pros involved of trying to kind of get a handle on it. But also the Adept was stronger. Zerg, I mean, I'm sorry, Zerg. <laughs> Blizzard patched it. Um, after a while, but yeah, it got a few nerfs. Yeah, because it was actually it was pretty crazy. It was pretty hilarious. They were just making it and killing people. I remember casting a game of uh, the one game I thought someone was going to survive in an adept harass, and it was Morrow, and he was playing like the game of his life, holding these adepts everywhere. And I said, "Okay, he did it. It's done. We're going to go into mid game." And then like 50 adepts shade up <laughs> as I'm saying it. I start laughing. Yeah. <laughs> as I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> never mind." <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Remember that. Um, but yeah, it's a different time now. Uh, there is a robo being made though, so that should telegraph some kind of a timing attack here. Yeah, it looks like just straight up an immortal push should be mm -hmm. coming. Oh, extra lings being made. I was wondering, like, what are yeah, the Korean commentators, commentators going about? nuts? And I'm like, yeah, I see the robo. I'm like, yeah, he's chasing the probe with the lings. It's cool. <laughs> 
Oh, he okay. can't quite get in. Good try. Good job. He needs to get this wall in, though. Speedlings are a real threat. A lot of lanes. Speedlings are also, uh, you know, uncommon at this level of play to try to just yeah. go for it. But, you so know, true. if the wall in's not up, there's a reason why you see Protoss wall in early, guys, is they're actually pretty pretty frail early on. And if, if they're not here to defend. That gate's going to go up in like a second, though. He needs to, okay. Well, <laughs> he can bust the gate, though. He has enough lanes. Yeah, it, it, it hasn't gained enough HP in the warp right. in. Those six lanes, I'm not sure if those are enough. But. Okay, so this is a funny little timing attack. Yeah, this is a designed. Oh my god, he did it. How funny. Well, it yep. seems like he wanted to let him in. Oh, what? Probes are actually doing quite a good job blocking here. You know what? I think that this was a very clutch helped. call from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you, like, you, you, are, you are totally correct in, in your analysis there, Atosis. He wanted to let that in because that way the, the lings get wedged over there and then he can fill it with a battery. Oh my wow. God, Hurricane is so good. That was you know, really When you win well like done. this on the ladder, this is like the ultimate moment where you go, yeah, I'm just better than you. Yeah. Get out. What league are you in? Well, but the rush was... isn't done yet. More lings are coming. Yeah, can he's... we have, can, you know, how good of a Tetris player is Hurricane here? How much can he block off with this? Because lings are not going to stop coming here. Force oh, field in. Oh, oh, oh Force field is sick. so clutch. He's so good. He's so good. This is a great hold. Now drones are being made, so that's when you know this yep. is really getting hard. Oh, another one. Look at the, the force field this time. Traps him. Damn. Ouch. Hurricane's so sick. Well, oh, Ragnarok humiliated in that game. Wow. A big deal for Hurricane, though, right? Round of eight yeah. in GSL Code S. And that you know is what? an outstanding achievement. He, he played like a round of eight player. Yeah, he's playing so well right now. Uh, he played fantastically during Super Tournament, knocking out Rogue, looking very, very strong throughout. Uh, and here he is. He just knocked out Ragnarok, who is definitely an up-and-coming player at the moment. Wow. Good stuff. I'm oh. sad to see Ragnarok go. Yeah. Uh, if he keeps playing as well as he is, though, he's going to be added to my team of Lenox. That's right. I'm going to call them the Lenox. They're yeah. led by Lenox. Yeah. Ragnarok might be the second recruit. I call them Artosis' round of 16 angels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to go to an interview now and see how Hurricane feels. He has survived the round of eight. Did he take it away? Hello, we're going to have an interview with Hurricane, the winner of tonight's last match. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on getting your career high. Career high. You know, it's been a long time coming here, and I'm just glad that my um, preparation for food. In the second game, you know, the spellbinding game, you defended the Zergling rush so well. Again, congratulations. You know, in the final round, you know, I thought you might be like letting your guard down, but you're defending so well. In the last set, I kind of anticipated that um, the enemy would actually pull that move. The reason why is because back in the past, I've actually analyzed one of his games, and then I found out that I should be cautious of this. And I think that's why um, I was able to anticipate it. No, I watched the Terran matchup, I watched the Zerg matchup, and you know, I'm just amazed at how proactive you are and how offensive you are in game. No, I'm like, you know, I try to go with the conventional Terran build. And these days I've been playing pretty offensively as well. And you know, I've just been uh, playing offensive and defensive, you know, I've been mixing it. You know, thinking about it, you know, back in the past, I always try to um, grasp the momentum in the games. And I felt like that's how you actually win. You know, we've seen all the races today. And I'm sure you've prepared a lot. And this is your chance of qualifying into the round of eight in two years. You know, 
I definitely need to practice more right now. And I try to, um, I tend to play worse on stage. And there's little time, so I need to um, play well against the terror matchup. You said that you prepared for the um, terror matchup the most. Who did you um, scrim with? Uh, yeah, um, I scrimmed against Gumio and Bunny, and they've helped me a lot. In Cyber Forest, you know, your offensive play really just was still mesmerizing. <laughs> Honestly, I felt like I did have the upper hand in the games <laughs> and I tried to make the game as entertaining as possible. You know, you definitely um, put a great move today. Round of eight. You're going to prepare a lot. You know, the group B guys, Gumio, Su, and everyone else. <laughs> Who do you want to play against? Um, I want to meet them as late as possible. There's Parting, there's Gumio, there's Deer, there's Su. <laughs> ah, all of those guys are very formidable opponents. <laughs> My GSL round of eight. How do you feel right now? The round of eight, I'll prepare really hard and try to play as calm as possible on stage. And thanks to all the um, kind people who gave me advice before my matches. I would like to give a shout out to my dad. <laughs> and my translator that I had. And the observer brother who um, helped me in the lobby. Once again, congratulations. Alright, thank you, Andy. So, we have tonight advancing two of our eight Protoss players. Will the trend continue? I don't think so, please. I don't think so. I mean, Classic was the one who was, I mean, if, if history means anything, he's the guy who was actually supposed to advance, right? Uh, Hurricane, I'm actually very happy to see advance. I know that there's going to be a lot of salty viewers that wanted Ragnarok or Fantasy. I get it. I really do. But look, Hurricane has not played anywhere near as well historically as he is now. And he's completely prepared. He's prepared for crazy all-ins that might have just swept the game away from him. Um, yeah, anyways, you guys saw the games. You get it. Look, uh, coming up on Saturday, that's at 1 p.m. KST. We're finally back to the normal GSL Code S schedules. We've kind of caught up for the year. Gumiho, Parting, Deer, and Sue. That's going to be a great group. It's really tough to call who's going to get out of there. Of course, Parting being back, the 20, was it 2013 world champion? Yes. 2013 world. 2012. Sorry. 2012, yeah. There's some, some reason my brain. SOS. Yeah. Um, the fact that he is... Uh, back and playing well and he's got that crazy parting style it makes it an even tougher yeah. group to call as far as who's going to get out there's so many like whatever happens there it's going to be fun by the way guys we will be back uh on twitch.tv forward slash starcraft for the ksl tomorrow night and friday night uh, that's at 7 p.m kst that's right so you can always join us there if you're feeling lonely we just hit the round of eight there so uh yes i mean it's it's a great time to watch some of that yeah. yeah, I mean it's 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 been a great year of StarCraft so far. It is. It has been. It will continue to be. Uh, so many good things going on. Pile and show tomorrow morning. Make sure you check that out. That's right. Tazel's uh, podcast is out. Get that anywhere you get your podcast. I keep forgetting to plug it in the cast. I keep saying I'm going to mention it somewhere and then I forget. So check that out. Yeah. I don't know what so, else to say. Protoss well, is move on. Night. It was a good night. Um, will it be an all Protoss GSL artosis? No, absolutely not. Okay.
The fans are going to be very disappointed to hear you say that. Hang on to your tickets if you're here in the studio. We have a giveaway at the end of the show. And um, we've got, like, uh, I think it's a photo book of the players. That's a very season rare two. thing. We've just switched over to We're season We're giving two. away these collectible items that yeah. you can't get unless you're down here in the this studio. This is probably the last one you'll ever see that doesn't have Maru in it, so that's going to make it ultra rare. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. I guess that's... I guess that's it. I guess there's nothing else to say, guys. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we will see you tomorrow for KSL, and we'll see you for GSL Code S on Saturday at 1 p.m. We love you. Bye-bye. Make it count. I must practice stories. Next, GSL Season 2. Renaissance.